So, uh, I put together this model. Uh, it's really just for myself, really, but I, I think it, it helps to uh, bring clarity to what leadership is all about. So, first of all, and I think I'm going to start with this one. I'm just going to draw... Uh, kind of the basic idea of what leadership is, okay? And there's really two sides to leadership. There's the, the, the leading of the person, and then there's the leading of the organization, okay? And, and then the programs of the organization, the strategic plans and the strategic visions, and, and the, the constitutions, the policies and bylaws, okay? So that's program-based. And then you have your leader, which is person-based, okay? Uh, and then that's where you have your leader needs to books like, um, you know, where uh, Coase and Posner talk about a leader needs to be honest. He needs to, he needs to uh, kind of uh, um, take the path or, or lead the path, lead by example. You have all those characteristics that leaders should have. Okay, and so that's person-based. Okay, so the first, the first way that I look at this is that um, in most organizations, the people are involved in your organization many times for their own purposes and their own reasons, and the reasons and the purposes of the organization don't necessarily align to the purposes of the individuals in it, okay? Okay, so let me give you an example. Okay, so this is the people in your organization, and this is their purposes, okay? The stars are, are kind of what, what their hopes and dreams are, what they value, okay? And then, so you have the people within the organization, and then you have, um, you have the, uh, the programs, I'm going to put in blue. So the programs of the organization are like your constitution, your bylaws and, and uh, your processes, your systems of governance, okay? So the, the, the programs in your organization. And the programs of your organization are often, right, they're, they're, they're often built to try and keep people within these, within these borders, okay? And so, the, uh, what, what happens is, oftentimes, the programs are built, but people are, and this is how it goes, people come and go. People join your organization for a little while and then leave. They join and then leave, and they join and then leave, right? Or, so either that happens, people join, if, that, if the organization's programs are too narrow, People will just come and go, come and go, come and go. Or what happens, and this is what happens more often than not, okay, is that we just widen our, we widen this, right? We, our programs become pretty broad. They become pretty broad. And then the leader, the leader also, I'm going to put it in red, the leader also kind of brings these, brings these broad general direction in. So that that way no one is too, no one gets kind of cut off too tight, but we're just kind of going in this general direction, okay? Um, that, that is often how many churches look like, okay? There isn't like a really clear focus. There isn't like a really clear direction. It just kind of gets broad. And guys, this is kind of messy. This is kind of how, you know, sometimes our family works, sometimes our, our church works, sometimes our business works, where it's kind of messy. It's not, it's not super clear who's in charge. Yes, your boss is in charge. You're the boss. You're in charge. You're the leader. Yes. But often you're, you're still, how many of you feel like you're absolutely in charge? How about parents? How many of you feel like, yep, I'm absolutely in charge? You know you're in charge, but do you often feel like you're still, you know, like you, you know that you're up here, but yet you still feel down here like everyone else is above you? 
Somehow you have to try and figure out how to make everyone else happy and you're trying hard to book holidays for this person and get this person to work a little bit harder and get this person to do this right and you're in charge, yes, but it feels like you spend most of your time not really being in charge. How, how, how about you, Mom? Mom's up there. Right? You're in charge, right? But when the baby cries and the, or the, the diapers are full, you, you are actually the one that needs to serve, right? How about you, pastor or elder? Do you feel like you're in charge and you know exactly where the church is going and you want everyone in your church to, to spiritually mature and to become those that go out and share the gospel and, and disciple others who spiritually mature, who go out and share the gospel and you just, you're just, yep, I know what I wanted to do and this is what it's going to do. How about you, boss? Right? The boss has to please the customer, but then he also seems like he has to try and please all his co-workers. And who's in charge? Right? It's sometimes it's pretty messy. Okay, so then the second uh, way is that, um, the second way to look at it is that we're all um, kind of leading, but there's always a couple voices, right? Um, and, 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 and there's always a kind of a, a, a group that forms, and the programs and the uh, and the leadership of, of uh, the, the, the programs, what the programs end up doing is that they end up kind of steering towards the way that the bigger group wants it. Maybe not the bigger group, maybe the loudest group, right? Maybe the loudest group. And so now the, the whole organization is kind of uh, hijacked into kind of going one way because either the larger group or the loudest group is actually pulling everyone that way. And you know what happens? Everyone's kind of going along. There's a really good example of this in our, in our government right now, in Canada right now, right? Where you see that sometimes it's just the biggest group and the leader, again, not really leading, but actually going along with the direction of the organization. And you see that the direction is actually going this way now, right? And there's some people that are going to leave. Some people are going to say, nope, I had enough, and they're, they're getting out. But for the most part, um, it's not super clear who's leading again. And it's just the loudest voice or the, or the, the, the biggest complainers or the, the strongest willed person or people that are kind of shaping the direction of your whole organization, right? This, this, uh, this again, is another thing that happens in organizations. Okay, but what should happen? Okay, what should happen? Okay, so as, as uh, we are all kind of uh, directing, all directed, what should happen is our goals... Okay, so, the, so every single person within the organization should be uh, with the leader's understanding and with the leader's guidance and, and, and direction and um, consistent values and those things. The leader should be actually kind of bringing the organization towards... Right? Towards a clearer and clearer point. So that the leader understanding the direction the organization needs to know, the leader uh, brings in people and keeps people. Right? And maybe brings in some new people, right? Maybe some new people need to be brought in. Leading that organization by his consistent, repetitive clear communication, pointing them back to the main purpose. Now this here, of course, is vision, right? Mission, purpose, right? And, and, and all those kind of things, right? So he's, the leader uses the programs to guide everyone and consistently bring everyone into alignment, right? And so the leader... Uh, shapes, helps shape the organization and helps shape the people, but he also shapes the program, okay? 
So then the program to and, and endeavors to help clarify and bring together and bring into focus more and more and more towards the program. Okay, so you see that this kind of goes everywhere. The program's there, but no one's following it, or the program widens, so that it kind of like fits everyone's needs. Or the program and the leader kind of get sidetracked and things are changed in order to go one way or, or one way that, and it's kind of, and if, if, if a person gets louder, if a different group gets louder and bends it back, then it go, you know, it bends back the other way. So this, the long-term perspective of this kind of leadership goes like this, right? Now you see this in Israel, right? In the Old Testament, in Israel and Judah, the people went towards idols, and then a king would try to bring them back, and then they would sway off again, and then they would get brought back, right? So, so you get this kind of long-term kind of just swaying back and forth, just, you know? Uh, but what really should happen is that you should have your leader and your program working in alignment and changing what they need to change and encouraging the people within the organization to to become more and more focused on what matters most and sharing the vision and, and explaining why it matters most. Why these people should be aiming their own personal goals towards the vision of the church or the vision of the family or the vision of the business or the vision of the organization. Now, what if, guys, just here, what if, what if someone's goals don't align to the main focus of the organization? Hey, that's okay. A good leader should know when to be able to encourage and to help launch, to help launch, good leadership should help launch people that don't align and maybe have different visions, help launch them into a place where they can find an organization you know, where the, the, the goals of the organization will align and um, uh, will align to that person. So a good leader cares and loves his people. So a good leader, when he says, okay, you know what, you're, you're not going to fit here well, but you know what, I do know of a place where that you will fit better. Now, of course, with your own family, with your kids, some of this stuff doesn't work exactly. You can't just kick your kid out and say, hey, well, that family's okay with your disobedience because look at their kids. They, their kids don't know. Why don't you go live with that family? That, I mean, I get sometimes this doesn't work exactly, okay? But pay attention to that. Like if you're a pastor, if you're, if you're a business owner, if you're, if you're uh, uh, involved in an organization, if you have someone that's a part of your organization but does not quite fit because, go, you know, you should, you should be engaged in trying to get them into a different organization where that will fit better, right? Where they'll fit better. Uh, if you're a, a, a business... Um, I mean, that's a part of serving. Remember we did the ladder? Right? Remember we did the ladder thing? Right? And we said it's not equality. Right? It's not equality that Jesus came down here and, 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 and he launched us up here. Remember we did that? So you're serving your people. So as a Christian leader, you, you know, you think, well, this person doesn't fit in my church. Well, you know what? Be a good, amazing Christian leader and go find a place where they fit really well. I said I would talk about the four pillars. So a good leader um, leads his organization uh, with clear and, and, and consistent communication, but he also shapes his programs to align to the direction and, uh, that he is aiming the organization. And it's not necessarily just a he, it can be a them. Like a mom and dad, it can be, uh, you know, a board, a five or ten people on a board, right? But I'm just saying the leader, or the leadership, okay? So view it as that.